Welcome to the Two Regular Teachers podcast. My name is Rick Kayla Thompson. And I'm Adam Lavaz, and welcome to the, the second podcast. And we're fresh off the Queen's Birthday weekend, Rick, and I think every teacher enjoys the Queen's Birthday weekend. Yes, it's a bit of a beacon in term too for us uh, Victorian teachers, probably for most teachers in Australia, isn't it? Because well, yeah, I would have thought so. Coming into assessment time, and, you know, it's just sort of something you look towards to go, right, there's a little break before those manic last few weeks. Of That's term. right. And I don't know about your school, but our goal is to actually have our reports done by that Queen's birthday weekend so we can actually enjoy it. And I know we, we were talking earlier about um, the actual Queen's birthday is in June, but the old Queen's birthday is in actually April. And um, mm. what's the reason behind that? Well, apparently, uh, and I haven't just got this from uh, Googling, but um, apparently it was in the UK, obviously where it, where it all um, originates, that there'd be the chance of better weather in June. So that's what, and obviously the UK coming into summer now, that they would put the holiday on that day, expecting that families and that would get outdoors. So it's interesting how a lot of the Commonwealth nations followed suit. And it's a good, it's a good idea, but typical Australia, we haven't, we haven't, we followed suit. But I mean, as we as we do this podcast now, it is raining outside and it's freezing cold, and <laughs> the winter is definitely here, which kind of doesn't really work for us, does it? Yeah, it's it's sort of one out of the bag if you get a, a nice. Su- uh, sunny day. That's on, right. You and I, June you and I, won't be in the backyard having a picnic at this at this very moment with our families. <laughs> it's uh, very much worth it inside. But uh, it is nice to have it off the Queen's birthday weekend, and uh, yeah. it's almost the end of term. And uh, thanks to those listeners who uh, tuned in to last week's episode, we have had um, quite a nice um, response uh, kicking off. We've had um, some messages back from some of our uh, uh, some other teachers in our personal learning networks, and. Um, I must admit we were quite happy and we've been really looking forward to this week's episode. Yeah, we have and very quietly chuffed to, to get uh, some feedback and actually it was good I got a few extra followers on Twitter that I was able to follow back and start to you know make some more links and things so we were, we were quite chuffed with the, with the response that we got and it was a good episode last week mate wasn't it? We were pretty happy with that? We were and uh, we were quite happy with the, with the timing of it and I guess that's you know we have been thinking about those things because there's lots of podcasts out mm-hmm. there so we're going to try and aim for that sort of 15 to 20 minute absolute tops uh, bracket. Yeah, we don't want to bore you to tears, do we? We, we, we want to keep it <laughs> short and to the point. We don't want you to be sitting here for an hour and a half uh, listening to us waffle on. Exactly. So the first thing we want to discuss today, Rick, is that um, at the fortnight ago at the uh, Teaching Learning in the 21st Century First face-to-face day, uh, another thing that came up, and again, I'm going back to Twitter here because I paid close attention on the day, yep. um, the issue came up about changing your own practice and whether or not you've actually got time to do it. Um, you know, there's so much to do, and as as teachers, we can only fit so much in the day. And we go home, and you know, we're doing so much at home as well. Um, can you elaborate for us a little bit about how it was brought up and, and what the response to that was? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I think one thing that it's important to say is that when you go to a P, I guess any PD, but particularly when you go to one that is talking about you know uh, digital learning. Or digital technology in a classroom is that it takes weeks and weeks after the event to yeah, actually sure. sift through all the information. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, another thing that, that, that came up, and I'm glad you brought it up, is um, about that changing your own practice. And, and, and this came from a comment from one of the uh, other participants on the day that said, um, who was concerned about the, like the pressure on them now going back to try and bring colleagues mm. and even the, the leadership of the school mm. um, and just on board. Be- and just before you go on there, you do feel that pressure because you go to a professional development day and you do feel a little bit of the weight of expectation that you need to bring something back to not only share with the school but to implement as well and and ICT particularly can be daunting it, it's big and it's and there's a lot of things here and if you're not used to it, it it's tough to bring back effectively yeah and particularly if uh, if it's if it's just a regular teacher like, like us who's at a conference like that or a PD like that it, it can be sort of even more daunting having to report back so this person um, brought this up with Will Richardson during his um, Q&A after his keynote and quite valid um, but he, he did say well yeah, that's the truth. It's going to take maybe a long time to either bring on the rest of your staff, even trying to get some of this stuff happening in your classroom. Definitely. So he said, you know, why don't you change something um, about your learning straight up? Yep. And uh, and then that might take six months yeah, or, or, sure. or, or, you know, a little bit less. Yep. So if you change your own practice outside the classroom just a little bit before you change your practice inside the classroom, then that's going to be that that's a huge step yeah so if absolutely. you if you join twitter and, and f- read some tweets of some some other teachers or if you read someone's blog article or um i don't know maybe you well actually you tried this last year didn't you adam you know yeah, you, 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 yeah. put, you put a google doc out for, yes. for the kids to try and collaborate yes. on and it was just baby steps i mean i put it and i made the mistake because i put it out there it didn't work because i forgot to click the share button so the kids are all going can't access it can't access it and you know it's a baby step but you've got to understand that 
or I made a mistake, but I'm not going to make that one again. So I, it was baby steps, putting the Google yeah. Docs, actually getting one out to the staff. Let's fill this one out and, and do things. And it really is, you don't need to take giant steps and look like the uh, greatest IC teacher the world's ever seen. You just need to take baby steps. And that baby step, though, was your... Um was your big step and that's you changing your practice absolutely absolutely and and it's paid dividends because as a school now we use google docs for all our planning we we do a lot of that stuff with the kids and it's Mm. and it's changed it it started outside the classroom and then it converted into the classroom and it's been a a major positive uh, impact uh, in my classroom that's great we uh said baby steps a lot in that little segment didn't we we did say a lot but baby steps are good there's nothing wrong with baby steps don't don't worry about that no Okay, Adam, in last week's episode, in our inaugural episode, you, you mentioned how we're coming through that time of the year for Victorian teachers where we're all doing reporting. We are. And um, we thought that um, just in case we do have some listeners from outside, not just our state, but outside the country, um, the way reporting works for most Victorian teachers. So basically where schools are mandated to report on students um, in June and December, and they have to give... Uh, progression points um, as to where the, yes. the student sits into, yeah. in, across all the curriculum yeah. areas. But apparently it, it's ac- actually up to the schools at school level to decide what types of comments mm. and anecdotal stuff comes mm. with and those progression points. And that's the same with the progression points too. I know that we were able to drop a few that you know we're teaching in the second half of the year, for example, yeah, of course, we don't yeah. have to report on. Yeah. So we thought we'd sort of um, kick off being that time of the year because it is very busy, just talking about our reporting experiences. So uh, Adam and I have both been in the job for about uh, nine years, haven't we? Yeah. And yep. um, over that period of time, we've both been involved in, in the schools that we've taught at, basically uh, doing the progression points, which has always been the same, but um, spending a lot of time outside of our working hours, school time. And this is not Definitely. a whinge, by the way. I'm just I'm telling you No, no, no it's it is. just part and parcel of the job, isn't it, mate? Yeah, I've just, of writing um, a lot of uh, comments um, about the student and how they work and the goals that they've achieved. Um, and it's, it's a lot of retrospective uh, writing, isn't it? It is, it is. It's very retrospective. And, and it'd be nice to, you know, when we talk about reports, you, you want to keep parents involved. You want to keep them up to date. And, and I think retrospective is a great word because... It is. It, you're giving them a report on the semester, but really as a teacher, the, in a perfect world, you'd like to be giving these reports frequently. You don't want to give them a whole big one at the end and, and, and be telling parents, oh, they need to work on this halfway through the year. You want to keep up that line of communication much more regularly. You know, that, and that's a perfect world, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And I've noticed in my experiences over the years that um, the way that we've written reports has, has, has evolved. Early on, there were, it was quite... Actually, very early on, it was moving from being... Um, uh, less anecdotal and more, um, and some would say less personal, into mm. really goal oriented yeah, statements so. that, that come straight out of the curriculum, which yes. I think some parents would find difficult to, uh, to read. Yep. Yep. Um, so then it's moved again to trying to be formal but leaving out jargon. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's, and look, we even got our, uh, our form to send home today. Uh, on the back, we actually have a list of vocab that we use in the okay. reports with an explanation about what it actually is. And even you read some of it and go, geez, you know, if I was a parent that didn't teach and I got some of these words, I wouldn't know what was going on, you know. So mm. you've got to be really careful, don't you, that we get, we use teacher speak so much, but we just can't do it in reports yeah. anymore. It's, it's just not, it's not a viable option. And with all due uh, respect to that process at your school, it's interesting that we're sending out um, like glossaries like that, isn't yeah, it? it? Is, like it we is. need to think like uh, perhaps that's a sign that maybe um, things need to change a little bit. So we but thought yeah. like, this is an ongoing discussion we'll have, and and uh, but we thought we'd just give a bit of an insight into how uh, where our report writing is happening uh, this year. So yeah. um, some of the work that I normally do at home has been reduced somewhat because. Uh, a lot of the comments that I've written about my uh, students' learning goals in reading, writing, and mm. mathematics um, is happening in a weekly conference that I have with the students. So that, I, I that's a fantastic some... idea. Fantastic idea. Okay. And so we're, we're sharing, we're actually uh, taking uh, notes while we speak to the kids and have a, re- a reflective discussion, and it's going into a Google Doc, which is then shared with the students through Edmodo in their backpack. We'll talk about Edmodo more in another podcast. So the final step is that parents basically can access their, stu- uh, their child's conference that day after school, mm, mm. and I think, and I think that's terrific. And and where I said before, I think it's a fantastic idea. You know, I still like a lot of elements of, of how we do it. I mean, we don't have that uh, opportunity at the moment. We aren't able to put ours up and and have that regular. Con- we do conferencing, and we do conferencing. You know, with students every week, and we use Evernote for that, where we can keep it all together and actually look at other staff Great. and what they've written up and and share it from year to year. But at the moment that's not accessible to parents. And I think okay. the goal over the next couple of years is to make that accessible. But we are 
doing a variation of that. We, we just don't have that share time with parents. You know, where I type it in, I'm tapping away and put it on Evernote and it gets uploaded and, and all those things that other teachers can see, but we haven't put an option out yet. And I think that's also a confidence thing. I think writing up a conference sure. and, and having a parent be able to read it that night, it's, that's confronting. And again, going back to the baby steps, that's something for our school that we need to take those smaller steps to get to that point. So we're still yeah. taking those notes and reporting on it in, in one big hit and sending them home and sharing them. And I think the goal for us is to reach what you guys are doing now uh, and actually being able to put that up to share with, with the parents uh, on a fortnightly basis. Okay. Um, so we'd like to hear some comments or, uh, from, from our listeners out there, particularly if you're a teacher in a different, um, not just a different school, but a different state, a different country would be fantastic sure. about your, the reporting expectations of your school and, and where it's at, and also mm. maybe your personal opinion. Um, we might put a link to a, a really interesting article that, um, uh, that just adds to this discussion from Jason Borton, a principal in Canberra who uh, we... Yeah. Um, who we both follow on Twitter. Both, both follow on Twitter and also wrote another interesting article about homework um, earlier in the year. But uh, we might put the link up to his recent mm. one talking about these issues. That'd be great. And look, if, if you know you are on Twitter and you, you do get on the blog, so we'd l- really love to hear your ideas. Like I, I'm always open. I'd love to hear what, what other people are doing and, um, and compare and, and have a look because some people have wonderful ideas and some people can get some wonderful ideas off us. So yeah, that's important. So if you've got something to share, please do so. Now, Adam, I've got to be honest with you here. I'm, I'm, I've got off... I've got up out of my sick bed for today's podcast. He has, and I don't know why I'm sitting next to him. To be perfectly honest, no, actually, that's 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 partly true. I, I have been off work the last two days, um, and I do have a certificate, to, uh, but suffering from some people would say man flu, yeah, but man flu. I, yeah. I call it a genuine flu. Yeah, um, it did knock me for six. That's for sure. And I guess all all of us uh, regular teachers can. Um, uh, Understand oh, yeah. about uh, the many bugs that we probably carry all year round um, and, and each catch year, in the classroom. Each year you think you're immune. You think, oh, I'm around the kids enough that surely my immune system has put up some sort of front. They've, they're, they're working behind the scenes. They know <laughs> what's coming, so they're ready for it. They never are. That's right. And look, some people have uh, the, the flu jab uh, when the, the nurse, yeah, yeah, nurse yeah, comes in. Um, yep. I, I've, I've res- I um, turned to sort of natural medicines and going to see a, a naturopath a few years ago, and that certainly helped. The main yep. thing it taught me about was how your immune system works. I found that really interesting that we do carry a lot of the stuff particularly as teachers yep. bugs that we ca- uh, carry during the term because you're sort of quite uh, busy and you're always moving about your immune system is working over time absolutely and that's why sometimes people get sick in the holidays because they actually stop and their body relaxes and that's when yep. the bugs can sort of yep. um, and, take out and it can hit this time, time too i mean talking about reports i mean the nights you stay up you're typing them you're lying awake thinking about them you're doing all that you're not getting as much sleep you're you're stressed bang, down you go. And it really, like you said, it hits you for six. It hits you out of the park. It doesn't yeah. hit you for six, it's out of the park. That's right. And I and look, some of us react differently. Some can fight through it. But I think, you know, sometimes you do need to stop and actually uh, get better, which is what I'm doing right now. But, you know, Adam, I, we, we talk about all these remedies or all these ways yeah. to try and um, fight, you know, catching... Um, flus and things off the kids because a lot of kids I've noticed do come to school unwell and you know sometimes parents can't help it because they're working and mm. the kids need to go but sometimes I think just keep them home oh, because yeah. you know they are sick but you can anyway, see it the moment they walk in the door you can see it the mile away <laughs> you can you can yeah. hear it as well you can hear it as they come around yeah I, me- I remember thinking to myself one day you know I'm doing well here I'm uh, you know I'm, I'm, I'm I haven't been sick for a while, I'm fighting off. And I remember I was talking to this, uh, I think it was last year, I was talking to a student in my class. And you know how the sun shines in through, you know, at a certain part of the yeah. day? Because I'm yep. in a building with lots of windows and the yep. sun shines in. And you know when it casts almost like a spotlight across the room and you can see the dust particles yeah, floating yeah. in the sun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I remember I was talking last year, talking to this one student who was quite sniffly. And, and mm. I remember just, just starting to think, probably you probably should have stayed home mm. today. And he just did this gigantic sneeze without... <laughs> covering his mouth this is not an exaggeration yeah, and no. I saw all the little loogies <laughs> floating through the air with the dust and I just thought to myself I mean there were looked like there were hundreds yeah, of them and yeah. I thought my heart sank I thought what chance do I have no you've been got no. here were the reflexes was it close enough that you had to sort of you know move one you know move left to right Absolutely. to sort of dodge them out of the yeah, way almost, and... almost like a slow-mo matrix dodging yep. a bullet type yeah, yeah. thing you know yeah. but, but reef style. There was, yes exactly yeah. but there yeah. were so many I thought gee, what chance do teachers have? Sometimes you get sick and you just get sick. We've got, we got none and, and you've got to stay home. Sometimes you've just got to stay home. So if, if you're sick out there today and you're listening to this, please let us know because we feel your pain. So the final thing I want to discuss is, I don't know if you've heard over the last couple of years about schools 
going a little bit over the top. So have you heard about rules where schools have brought in about, you know, there's, you can't no kicking of footballs, uh, no monkey bars and things like that. Have you heard about some of the rules about the schools where kids have fallen off, parents have gotten a little bit worried, and so schools have said, well, we're going to ban monkey bars. And there are only sort of single schools. Have you heard a little bit about I, that? I think I saw, are you talking about something, and it always makes the media. There was something in the newspaper. Always, always, always makes the media. about skipping, maybe? Yeah, or something skipping like that and, being, and um, no, no skipping. You can't bring those to school because a few well, kids have been fired by. I remember it was once, but that's probably High fives and, and copping them in the head. That's the West Indies brought that in, but um, <laughs> I was actually lying awake last night before I went to bed and I was flicking through some articles and I came across an article about an American man who, who walked to school to pick up his kids and was arrested because he wanted to take them and walk them home and that wasn't school policy. Now, wow. I couldn't believe it. I was reading it and about that he... The, the, the line to pick them up in the car park was a mile long. Now, he was at the back of this line and thought... Well, I'm not going to wait here all day. I'm going to so he went and parked just down a side street, got out of the car, walked down to the school, and went to sign out. So I'm such and such. I want to pick up my kids. They wouldn't let him take them. Now the security guard that was there said, "Well, I'm sorry, it hasn't been 15 minutes. They haven't been released for uh, for long enough yet." And then the parent was saying, "Well, I couldn't care less. These are my kids. I want to take them." Well, and the security guard said he was being it was disorderly contact, conduct conduct. And arrested him. Where where were the students at this point? Still in class? So they had been released. So they had been, the bell had gone and they were waiting out. And he was in the line. The line's going slowly because, you know, the kids get in the car. They've got to wait for them to get back out on the road and so forth. He just didn't want to wait. So he's gotten out of the car and walked down there to pick him up. Wasn't allowed. Is this the line of cars or a line of people? Line of cars. It's a line of cars that was a mile oh, long. Wow. So he's parked down the side street, gone to pick him up and been arrested for it. Now, What was he charged with? He was charged with being disorderly. Was was the words that the security guys and they were filming it, of course, and 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 put him, you know, put him in the squad car and stuff to take him away, just because. And his kids weren't. Who was there kids. with a the camera? <laughs> well, well, we we speculate it might have been his wife, but he was there trying to pick him up and wasn't allowed. Now I don't know about you, but if that was my kid, I'd be saying, well. I'm not really fussed about that rule. If this is my kid and I'm here, hmm. I'm going to be taking them home. And they tried to, actually, I think they tried to convince him, oh, it's, going to, it's not going to take too long, go back to your car without trying to cause a scene. And he said, well, no, I want to walk my kids home. I'm going to walk them out. And he wasn't allowed. Different, uh, amazing. I'm, I'm flabbergasted. I couldn't believe it. I am thinking, though, obviously, and I'm sure you did too, being a different country, um, is it is it security being tighter at this at this particular school? Obviously, if you walked into a, a, either of yeah. our schools and did that, you know the, the oh. students would be released as long as and, you and I them and, out. and I suspend. I reckon my primary school days and my high school days, I walked home. I walked home ninety five percent of the mm-hmm. time. Sometimes I get picked up in the rain. And sometimes you know my mum and dad are just you know bad luck. You're walking home in the rain, so you'd have to do it anyway. But this this parent was known. It wasn't as if we don't know who you are. They knew exactly who he was. He's got a fourteen year old and eight year old. It's not like they were four or five mm-hmm. years old. Mm. Wasn't allowed to take a moment. I, I, I just think it goes over the top, mate. And, Possibly. And this was in Tennessee, in America. Yeah. Um, and I, flabbergasted last night. Oh, absolutely. Uh, ridiculous. I just wonder, though, whether... And, and I could be jumping the gun way too much, and pardon the pun there, that was accidental, but does it have something to do with you know some of the... Um, atrocities that have happened over the years in schools in terms well, of people w- walking in with guns. Do you think it's just a genuine security so. thing that no, we have to follow protocols, your students will be released? And, and I think so, will... but is this protocol gone mad? I mean, seriously, yes. I mean, yes. it, possibly. Okay, yes. Gun, they can't get their gun laws under control. That's, that's a discussion for, for outside of a podcast, but yeah. I, I just think it's ridiculous. And I just think schools these days. We, we've got too many rules. We, we look after the kids too much. If a kid falls off the monkey bars, well, the monkey bars have got to go. If a kid gets hit in the face with a football, well, I'm not kicking the footballs in this area anymore. It's mm. just, I think it's a little bit over the top. So, look, I don't know. I don't know if anyone else out there in uh, the World Wide Web has an opinion on that, but I'd love to hear it. If your school's got something, uh, you know, a bit of a different rule or something, you know, that sort <laughs> yes. of stuff, we'd love to hear about it. And, and uh, yeah, we might actually put a link to that article uh, at the end of the blog. And um, after the podcast, you might want to read for yourself. But fascinating stuff, Rick. Absolutely. So thank you for listening again this week, guys. That's the end of the podcast. Um, Yeah, thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed it. I'm Adam LaVaz. And I'm Rick Kayla-Thompson. And we've been two regular teachers.